Hello Internet! Today I'm talking about these modular character sheets that I'm developing and how you can get involved and make your own. Alright, so a quick rundown on how these work. So, these are two samples that I've been working on. Uh, this is a warlock character for my wife and a fighter character for my six-year-old son. And together we're running through the Lost Minds of Fandelver. Uh, this is the first scenario that I'm setting up and I'm going to run this demo to show off the different features of these character sheets and sort of how they work. So the real trick to these is actually the use of this poster putty, which you may already have around. So this poster putty is really interesting. It's a adhesive that is non-destructive for the most part. Um, I have heard and I have seen this rip some pieces of paper where it's overly adhered to other pieces of paper. But I find that if you work with it, you can actually use it in a non-destructive way and make modular things. So these character sheets are held together completely by poster putty, which means that each of these items on this character sheet can be removed and rearranged and placed somewhere else. And this goes down to the very little details, such as these numbers. And then these numbers can just be re-adhered and attached in different ways. So what led to the development of these character sheets is I wanted to play with my son, who is six years old, and my wife, who's not entirely 100% into tabletop gaming. Uh, it's difficult to get people into tabletop gaming that aren't already, say, into the hobby. So I've been playing since second edition, and it's very easy for me to uh, tackle a rule book and look through a character sheet. So like here we have a sample character sheet from the Lost Minds of Fandelver, which is actually my son's fighter character. Now when you hand a sheet like this to a person and say, all right, we're gonna play a game, they look at it and go, what is this, my W9 for taxes? It's just a big spreadsheet laid out with a bunch of numbers. Which it works, and if you know where to look for it, you can find what you need and it's very easy to reference. My goal was to turn this into something more visually pleasing, such as something like this. Now, originally, I was just gonna do up a bunch of custom character sheets and print them out wholeheartedly. And then I decided to print out some pieces and lay them out in real life to sort of get a graphical handle on things. And then I came across the idea of sticking sticky text in the back to then make them modular, I was like, oh, I can make everything completely modular and I can even use it for track. So like here we have my son's hit points. So as he loses hit points, he can just take these, take them off the character sheet. Now, my first concern was that, will the sticky tech hold? And it actually does. So if I take the sheet, everything stays there. You can like, I've gotten crazy. Everything stays put. Really, the, what stops the adherent is specific force where you pull to the side or pull up and you can see that it comes off there like that. So other features of the character sheet, since it's modular, inventory can, can really become a neat thing. So on this front page, I have my son's character, some real basic information. So we got fighter level one, again, all modular. So as he levels up, you can actually take this one off and replace it with a two. I have his armor class, initiative, movement. I converted it into squares because I'm not gonna have them do that math. Uh, but if you want, you could have it be feet there. Uh, I have his maximum hit points, his death saves, and his hit dice. And then down here, I have a little equipment bar with some proxy artwork that I got off the internet to symbolize what he has equipped. And then I have his attack lines. So here I have a token, again, proxy art to show that it's his great X is to hit and then I have a picture of the dice so getting into the hobby they don't my wife and son don't always know which dice to grab so if I have an image of it it's very easy and again these are modular so I can change them out and then I have he rolls that adds five and then his damage is the one d12 plus three and what's great is this is all modular so I can take this off and if say he wants to hand the axe to someone else he can he's got to have to change the modifier but then he can equip it but if he changes equipment he can swap it out and then down here, he has three javelins that he can throw, and this doubles even his ammo tracking. So here we have the three javelins. So say he rolls to hit one, and he can take this javelin, and now he's used it. And he can even take it, say he threw it at this goblin, and he can stick it right to the goblin. And now he can remember that he has to recover that from the goblin, if he wants to. Or if he misses, we can put it on the map and say it like falls into the grass there. And now there's a reminder that there's something there that he can go back and grab. And there, boom, instant ammo management. 
And you can do this with arrows and have a quiver. But now let's open up this character sheet. And as we look on the inside, I have more. So I have the stats on the inside because we're mostly going to be going through combat. And that's what I'm teaching them as they're beginning it. But we can add more. It's an, and again, it's modular. And you can move this even to the front of the character sheet if you wanted to. It's just as easy to stick it. But here's where I think the system really shines, is we can manage inventory and coinage. Now, inventory has always been notoriously hard to track in Dungeons & Dragons, where you just basically have, on the regular character sheet, a long ledger of items, and then you got to erase and rewrite them down. Well, when you turn them into these tokens, you can place them on a grid system, and it's very video gamey, but it's very quick to where... All right, he looks and he can instantly see what he has in his inventory. And then he can instantly like either hand things off to other people, trade or rearrange his inventory. And when he gets loot, he can then add items to here. We'll get into that later. And then this becomes a container. So like this is his backpack. He can hand his backpack to another player that can then look at his inventory and trade with him. Um, or he can take this out of here. So you can have it and look at this part. And again, you can completely rearrange. It's completely modular. And then also we can do abilities. So here is his second wind ability. And I can take the description, write it out and print it out. So I prefer, as you can see, all of the text here is this white with a black outline. It's very video game graphic design where you've got these high contrast letters and numbers. So here's a second wind ability written out, but then I have a proxy symbol right here so that it's again, a visual thing. So where if he can't quite read or remember what this is, he'll kind of remember the symbol because we remember pictures better than we can remember words for the most part, which is why most MMOs have that symbol for the skills instead of just a list. And then I have it, it will heal 1d10 plus one damage. So he can look in there and remember that. So if we look at my wife's character, similar setup, so she is playing a warlock, and when I open it up, again, you can rearrange it however you want, and this is the way hers is set up. So she's got her spells listed up here, and again, another attack line for burning hands. Um, she's got Dark One's Blessing from being a warlock, so temporary hit points. So when she takes out a monster, she gets the four temporary hit points. She can then take these right off the spell card, or ability card, and then place them on the front of her character sheet. And now she can remember she has those temporary hit points. And again, these are, they stick, they're modular, and they stay. Like, this is flapping a little bit because this is only stuck on by a couple pieces, but, you know, they don't go anywhere, which is really, really cool. So now this can get folded up and put away. Now, this has more applications. So, let's say you want to roll initiative. We can have an initiative tracker, again, stuck together with sticky tack. And this can go here. So here's a quick demo, tips and tricks with the sticky tack. So when you get this sticky tack, it starts off, it's usually very hard. So what you want to do first is you want to play with it and make it a little bit more elastic, usually just heating it up a little bit. The colder it is, the more solid it is, it'll be less malleable. So you can get this at any, um, at most stores actually, usually by posters, because uh, these are used to hang posters on walls non-destructively that won't peel off the paint. Now, I'll show you on the inventory sort of how it works. So I have it attached to all sorts of things. So if I take this off, you can see that there's a little bit of residue left here. Whenever that happens, I keep just a small bit of sticky tack around with me and you could probably hand this out to all your players just a little bit it's non-toxic too by the way so you don't have to worry if your kids get a hold of it um and you can peel off any sort of residue that's left so i found that as i'm applying this to these objects if i apply a whole lot stick it down and peel it off and there's residue that means i use too much of the sticky tack because really less is more in the situation because these objects don't weigh a whole lot. They don't require a whole lot to adhere. So if I then just push that down, that should be good. So with that little bit there, see, not going anywhere. So now what I've been doing as a DM, as I print and cut out these tokens, I'm adding them to a three ring binder and I can then organize them in these sheets. So all these are, are each a little cutout adhered with sticky tack. and then organized. So these are plastic sheet protectors with cardstock slid into them. 
And for each of each of my pieces here, I'm using 110 pound cardstock, which is a stronger cardstock, but you can still get at like Staples or Michaels or such. And it's very sturdy. You could use less strong, you could use a uh, lighter cardstock, but I like the heavier stuff just because I, I know I'm gonna be fiddling around with it a whole lot. But you could even use paper if you wanted to, but then you're gonna have more wrinkling and you might get some folds. So then I have these pages laid out with numbers that I can easily reference, grab, pull off, and apply. And I find that starting off, you don't need a whole lot to start off with. Here are my proxy tokens. So now I also even use it to manage my dungeon tiles. So all these dungeon tiles are stuck to these plastic sheet protectors with, again, cardstock in to give it a little more rigidity, to get, make it a little more rigid as I turn the pages. But yeah, these, they're stuck pretty good. Now I have read some places where people talk about the sticky poster tack had damaged them. Now, I have not seen that happen yet. I find that as long as you're not using too much, even when you do, even when I use too much, I notice it just leaves a little bit of residue behind. But I noticed that I'm not seeing any damage to them. Some people said they're ripped. So I think it might be that the um, dungeon tile, it might've been applied to maybe a weak spot on the dungeon tile, or it might've been pulled off like uh, maybe vigorously. But I find that if you just kind of slide it to the side, it releases the bond between the sticky tech and the plastic or paper. And they work fine. Um, let me know if you do encounter that and maybe we can figure it out. But I have not yet encountered any damaged dun dungeon tiles. I hope not to. But yeah, these, and I was shocked to see that it holds I mean, these aren't going anywhere. And if you if you need more protection, you can even put them into a binder that has a zipper on it. And originally I was gonna put them on the cardstock and then slide them into the sleeves, but when I noticed that they weren't even moving, I was like, oh, why bother? Now I have them organized and I can instantly access them as I'm building maps. And speaking about building maps, you can use the sticky tech to build out modular dungeon tiles. So like here's the first encounter of Lost Minds of Handelver. And these are just dungeon tiles adhered to um, not even cardstock, this is just construction paper. So I can take these and put them into a folder and then whip them out and instantly have a tile, instantly have a map. So in Dungeons and Dragons, I like to incorporate art as much as I can into the game. It just increases the, the visual uh, fidelity of the game. So I know not all players need art. Um, a lot of us have spent time reading fantasy novels and watching fantasy movies, but if you're introducing someone new to the game, someone younger, so like my son who doesn't have the same knowledge base and my wife's not into the same sort of fantasy tropes as I am, so she might not know, like imagine it the same way. So incorporating art really helps and sometimes incorporating art is just fun. But printing off pictures of art they didn't become more pieces that you have to manage. And I find that the more you add as fidelity to your Dungeons and Dragons game, the more pieces you get. You get things such as the spell cards or item cards and art. And all of these pieces then become more stuff you have to manage, which adds to the weight of the game. And it's harder than to apply it. This is where, where the real fidelity of the system comes in because now you have objects and containers and they become infinitely more manageable where every object can be inserted into a container and then you can nest those containers. So like if we look at the character sheet, the character sheet itself is a container. It contains all of this information and it contains all of the items the character carries and all of the stats he has and the abilities. But each of these items can then be removed. So like this skill, Second Wind, is a container or his coin pouch itself is a container and it contains these items that can then be taken off. So now you have this object, it goes into a container, this container, then you can go into another container, and it creates this elegant system of organization that can be applied and set forth. As dungeon masters, we can organize many things. So being a dungeon master involves taking all these little pieces and combining them into an adventure. By using this, this object container system, you can then organize a lot more bits and bobs a lot quicker. All right, so for the Lost Minds of Handover, from the Dungeon Master perspective, I like to organize my quests on these pages. So this is just construction paper, 
and it's folded in half and you can put all sorts of information you want in here again using the sticky tack and container system but then you can take these so like here I have they're in Neverwinter and they're talking to a dwarf to get their quest. So I have this art and again, stuck with sticky tech. So this becomes its own object in a container that after I use it, I can then reuse it for different situations and I can organize it in a binder just like the other components. So, but this is folded so I can take it, hang it over my dungeon master screen facing out to the player so they can see that and then I can have my own notes on this side. So like this one, so they get the quest from the dwarf, they travel down the Sword Coast, and they get encountered by goblins. So I can read the description out of the book, and then I can show them, hey, goblins pop out, and I can show them this art. And then on the other side, I have a printout of the goblin stats. I have the two dead horses they run into. And then I created these loot kits right here. So this is the experience they get uh, from defeating a goblin. And I have it in two sets of 25 because my wife and son are playing, so they can split it out. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can just hand them tokens and they can divide it off how they see fit later if you have more of these tokens. But then, but I feel like handing out these tokens, it, it really, it becomes a more tactile thing of you giving them. And again, stuck with sticky tech, I can then take off this container. It has their experience points, just a random vegetable that the goblins carry and a couple silver pieces. And when they go, I loot the body, I can say, all right, you find a rotten cabbage in his pocket and two silver pieces. I hand this to them and when I hand it to them, they can then take the pieces off real quick, apply it to their bag, and now they have that inventory. And instead of pausing the game and writing it down and managing inventory, it's a more tactile thing. And yeah, so this can go and just hang out right there. So here's another use for the sticky tack. So if you have a, a map like this from the essentials kit, you can use the sticky tack to apply tokens. So here I have just a party tracker. So they start in Neverwinter and they make their way down. So say they're on the high road and then you can like say attacked here or the different places they visited. And you can do that on any map and then take it, fold it up. Again, they're not gonna go anywhere. And you can fill it up with tokens for where the encounters are. So another thing you can do with the sticky tack is if you wanna manage hit points, You have your goblins out there. You can use these hit point trackers, again, with sticky tack. And you can literally, so say a player rolls and applies damage, you can have them apply damage to the miniature. And now they can visually see how much damage has been dealt to each creature. And as the creature moves, it's stuck. And you can also use this to apply conditions, fairy fire or deafened or petrified and visually see on the miniature for initiative. Here's a prototype initiative tracker. So it's written out. Um, you got a turn marker. Again, you use sticky tech. So when they roll out initiatives, you can have, so my son rolls a 21, put it somewhere around where the 21 would be. My wife rolls a two, be down here. The goblins roll 11 or just somewhere in there. And instantly you have a track, and then you can use this to mark the turn. And again, since it's on sticky tech, say you had to stop for whatever reason, you can adhere it to the game board. You could use flat paper tokens to track where everyone's position is and put the map away. Put it into a folder and carry it on another day. So I hope you see some of the cool uses of the sticky tech modular system. And I can see there's several more potential uses for it and I'd like to develop it more. So up on my Patreon, I'm gonna have PDFs of the different assets that I've created so far and I intend to continue creating assets for my home game and I'll release them on my Patreon. For $3 a month, you can get access to any of the assets I've created so far. Uh, then you can print them yourself on the cardstock and cut them out by hand. I will also have cut files available uh, for the silhouette cutter if you wanna be fancy and go out and get one of those. You don't have to though. Uh, and if you're playing with little ones, it's probably a good dexterity exercise to have them cut out the little pieces. And then as you cut out the pieces, you can apply them to a binder and then your collection will slowly grow uh, as mine has. And they can go forward from there. If you think this is a good idea and you want to see more, um, definitely sign up for the Patreon. Uh, also, links below, I'll have links below to Amazon for all the materials I use. And if you click on those links, uh, and buy anything from Amazon, I'll get a kickback and that'll go to supporting uh, this project moving forward. If you use those links, it won't cost you anything extra, but some of the proceeds will get kicked back to this channel.
I hope you enjoy it. Please share what you've made, and hopefully together we can make something cool out of this. Uh, happy gaming!